<clears throat> Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello, hello. <clears throat> what are you guys up to? It is Friday night. I don't know anything about anything. I have not watched the episode tonight. Actually, it's not even, it comes out in like 19 minutes. So I have not watched Drag Race. I'm a Taurus. <coughs> oh my God. <clears throat> I just want everybody to know that, yes, I am smoking weed, but I have quit smoking cigarettes. It's been over a week now. Have not missed them at all. <clears throat> but I have been smoking a lot of weed. I'm a Taurus. Oh, I'm going to gag. Oh my God. This will be interesting. Actually, quitting smoking was not hard for me to do. I think what it was is like, <clears throat> it just took me a long time to just get tired of smoking. Um, so once I was ready, then I just, I just didn't do it anymore. I didn't create this whole, I didn't make it like this whole big thing, you know, to try to like psych myself out or, or whatever, to try to pretend you know, if I wasn't ready, I, I wasn't ready, you know, and I don't want to torture myself ever. So for me, <clears throat> I just get to a point where I start paying attention to other smokers. <laughs> and I know this might sound really crazy, but it helps me to, and I just think about things that like, that I see that maybe I don't necessarily like or like habits that smokers have that I don't usually like or find attractive or anyway so like if i smell somebody and they smell like cigarettes but like it like it's it's not like flattering to me and i think to myself oh my god like i wonder if that's how i smell when people meet me you know <clears throat> yeah pretty much i was so bored i quit smoking cigarettes Okay, no spoilers, honey. No spoilers. Nobody. I have not watched the show. Please, no spoilers. I don't want to know anything. Thank you. I didn't ask. Nobody in here asked for that information. So let's not talk about Drag Race. <clears throat> so anyway, going back to cigarettes, I just... So like I would I would think about like how it smells on people and how like <clears throat> I would find myself like staying up at night and just like smoking and smoking and smoking and if I couldn't go to sleep I would smoke and then I and I was like these are like all bad habits and like smoking in my car so now my car stinks my clothes probably stink my breath is probably gonna not smell good. Um, your fingers, it's just bad for your skin. You know, I find myself just ashing anywhere. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, you just get so comfortable being, you know, I don't know, getting your life. But I, I really enjoy smoking, like the whole like hand to mouth, inhale, exhale, smoke sort of thing. Like I do love that. So I'm like, okay, so what is the balance? like? So it is going to be weed. So I smoke the weed. <clears throat> oh, I'm excited about Mardi Gras. I'll be going to Australia. I'm really excited about it. <clears throat> I 
your woman is live, honey. Yes. Like, okay, so I know you guys like write me all the time and I'm and I try to read, but sometimes it goes really fast. Are my glasses prescription? Um, actually, um, they're not. Um, these are these are a really cool pair of Gucci glasses. I really like them. They look like they're a little dirty. But no, I really I really love these. <clears throat> I started smoking when I was like 15 and then I smoked until I was about 23. Yeah, till I was about 23 years old, I think that's. And then <clears throat> I didn't smoke for until I think I was like 27 when I started smoking again. I moved to LA. No, it's it 26, I think. Yeah. Um, I forget how old I was. <laughs> anyway, when I first moved to LA, I was not smoking. And I remember um, like a few months in or whatever, I started smoking cigarettes. So, and clearly I was like embarrassed about it, you know, at some point. And then I quit again. And then, um, I didn't smoke for the rest of the time. I was, oh, I lied. I started smoking. Hold on. When did I start smoking again? Damn, I smoked for a hot minute. <clears throat> I sure did. I smoked for a hot minute. Anyway, I quit and start all the time. But, like, ultimately... I'm just at a point now where I'm like, I don't really need it. I don't really want it. It's not improving the quality of my life. <clears throat> yeah, it, if it's not improving the quality of my life, chances are. <sighs> do I do any, do I do other drugs? <clears throat> what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't really consider weed a drug because it's a natural thing. Drugs are usually, <clears throat> drugs are usually like something that's like mixed up and have chemicals and things like that in them. But like ultimately this is just pretty natural, you know? <clears throat> so yeah, it's a plant. See, you said you'd like to make me a cocktail that I don't need weed. But the thing is, I have more control over myself when I smoke weed. But when I drink alcohol, I don't. And I think for me, not having some kind of control over, especially me, because <laughs> apparently I'm a control freak, um, <clears throat> that... You know, it just something about that is just unsettling with me. I'd much rather, hi Hassan. I'd much rather have a <clears throat> weed than uh, cigarettes. Alcohol is definitely a drug. Why do you? What do you think about Jamie Lynn Spears? I can't stand her, to be honest. Um, I don't really think about her. The only time I <laughs> ever think about Jamie is when they put them on my TV or Facebook ads or whatever. Um, honestly, I think everybody's family is fucked up. I think a lot of people can relate to Britney Spears. Um, you know, maybe not like exactly the situation, but definitely the feeling of those situations and stuff like that. I, I definitely think... Um, it's sad to see like families going at it like that, but that's what family is, honey. Like not everybody has like, you know, a kumbaya family, you know, <clears throat> there's always somebody who is around that you can't fully trust, I think. And that really is sad. 
So you gotta be very protective of like who you let around you. I'm reading this. I do have some, I, I have an older brother, an older sister and a younger half brother. Do I speak any other languages? <clears throat> Um, I don't and that I mean I really try to learn how to speak other languages but for some reason like I'm just not as good like I know enough to get into trouble I don't ever know enough to get out of trouble <laughs> and you have to be able to communicate so anybody who is able to speak more than one language even if it's broken I tip my hat to you because that is that is dedication for sure and one thing I really love is communication and kind of kick myself in the ass for not being able to speak how I want to speak but at the same time too like if you really have a connection with human like a human you don't necessarily have to know how to speak their language to get to know them and for them to get to know you so <clears throat> Okay, can we petition Bravo? Wait, what? Bravo for a drag queen show. <clears throat> you guys really love drag so much. <clears throat> I love it. It just, the dynamic of it, it changes. You know, because like what used to be mainstream of drag, like the thing about drag that used to be mainstream was never really what it was like anyway. You know, it was always it was always more fabulous um, than mainstream would allow us to be, you know? And <clears throat> and I think once it became more mainstream drag lost um, I mean it gained so many great things, don't don't get me wrong. I'm so grateful and I am, because of its changing, I live a much better life than I would ever had imagined when I first started doing drag. Just, you know, very few and far in between would ever make it really, really big in the drag world. And um, now there's hundreds, if not thousands of queens who make a really good living you know, doing drag, so, <clears throat> anyway, um, but what I was going to say is, now that drag is more mainstream, it, I don't know, there's something, there's that thing about it that made it really super special to me that, like, I think we lost in the sauce, you know, I don't know, it's, I, I don't know, <clears throat> Drag is a very, like, touchy, not touchy, but it's just a really odd subject to talk about. You know, because I'm coming from an era uh, right before it kind of changed over and went mainstream. So I know a lot of the struggle and, and I experienced a lot of the working for no money and, and making your own outfits. There was not designers around making drag queen outfits, you know. <clears throat> I think a lot of people that make outfits today, uh, it's probably a really good, you know, drag queens probably open that door for them, you know, and, and created a whole nother business there. But, um, and drag, pe drag queens always inspire, you know, fashion people, so... It's so crazy now that, like, drag queens have, like, designers and stuff to make stuff for them. I remember when you would just pretty much have to put it together yourself. And it would be so unique, you know. Like, like now everybody can, like, if somebody sees something that you have that they like, they can go have it replicated. They can go and have it made and and pretty much take your whole gig <laughs> if, if they're good enough. Um, but... Ultimately, like back in the day, we would have to like kind of put things together ourselves, like really get our hands in there and, 
and really put our own fingerprint, <clears throat> make it completely unique. And, and no one else in town had it. No one else in the state had it. No one else in the country had it, you know? It was all you. <clears throat> hey, Matthew. I see you just coming up in here. Hi there. Oh, you just rolled up a joint? Work. Smoking along with you, babe. Okay, perfect. I think I'm going to take one more puff. Your music is so original and fun. What is your favorite song you have recorded? <clears throat> uh, well, thank you. First of all, that was a really sweet message. Um, I really love my music. I really still like feel like I'm trying to like figure out exactly like what my sound is or my voice is. Because like, I kind of just tap into whatever I'm doing and just kind of go with that. You know, like I could tra change the tone of my voice or the pitch of my voice or... Uh, whatever just to kind of complement the era or time or genre of a song you know and sometimes I'll take like a completely different sound from another genre and mix it in with the beat of a different genre you know and I I really enjoy just kind of drawing outside the lines when it comes to music and not really trying to do anything specific that I heard before or follow like any like rules when it comes to like writing a song and like how many choruses or bridges or intros or outros or you know all these things that go into a song like I'm just like I'm gonna sing it the way I want to sing it if it has four choruses in it great if it never has a chorus in it and I just tell a continuous story and then I will do it like that too like I don't know but that's kind of, my head is like all crazy when it comes to my music. And I don't know if, I don't, I'm sure other artists will understand it. Um, but I think ultimately like people that listen to music or people that like, a lot of times people that just make music and they're just trying to make music. and made demos and stuff like that and this was the time that I'm supposed to be really like working on my album right now but I kind of had you know you you can't plan for what your brain is going to be ready for like it it just is one of those things that has to come organically and um I just need to get back into a, a place where I can write again and really make sense of everything and just kind of like clear my head. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe make a song out of it, but um, we'll see. It's the Kylie lipstick. No, this is actually a lighter, not lipstick. How about that? <clears throat> I forgot how much <clears throat> <clears throat> I want to do. Okay, so this is my idea <coughs> for an album <clears throat> I mean usually when you put an album on you want it to be like the same vibe which is I think is amazing <clears throat> and it actually really makes sense honestly but a part of me just wants to put out like um I would like to put out like an album and I've been singing different genres but 
somehow the music, it never stops and it just kind of goes into um, a different song. So it's like, they all sound, they all, it'll be like one huge song, but it's like broken up. Does that make sense? And it just goes. And there's, yeah, there's not a beginning or an end. And it kind of just wraps itself around. Like if you played it on a record and it just kept playing over and over again, like it would just never stop. The end blends in with the beginning, so on and so forth. Sounds like Kanye structure of a song. That's crazy. I've never listened to Kanye. I know um, Gold Digger. I know uh, Fade and uh, Jesus Walked. Those are the ones that I know. I know those, those three, but as far as like his music, I don't really know. I am passionate about my music, but I also, um, I also, and I like Monster too. Um, I also really love acting. I, that's something that I really want to get better at and do more of because I just, uh, I really just love, um, challenging myself and really getting in touch with different emotions with myself. Um, it's fun. It's fun to reenact something. Uh, somebody said to me, they said, what was it like working with Todrick? Um, okay. So <clears throat> I'll tell you how it came about. Um, <clears throat> me and Todrick have been friends for a few years and he's super sweet and probably one of the most talented people. Thank you. Fame problems. Um, he's probably one of the most talented people and that I've ever met. And he just, he, he, I've never seen anybody working around the clock like this person does. Like he is constantly coming up with the ideas and producing them and he already has other shit in the chamber like he is literally living his dream and getting his life and I love it and it's such an inspiration to me <clears throat> so anyway back to the the matter at hand someone asked me what was it like working with him <clears throat> it was really cool and it just kind of um Right after I won, I did a gig in Idaho, and he was there too, and he heard that I was going to be there. I They just told, announced that I won Drag Race, and spoiler alert, sorry. Um, and he was like, oh, I'm going to stay in town because I want to see you. And so he stayed in town, and we talked for a little bit. Um, we had talked about maybe doing a song together, and one day I was in L.A., with my friend Timo recording a song and I get a text from Todrick and he was like, hey, what are you doing? Um, I'm like, I'm literally just wrapping up in the recording studio here doing a new single called Escobar that will be out real soon. <clears throat> so anyway, I went over to Todrick's. He, well, he sent me two songs. He was like, hey, can you come and record today? And I was like, what? That is so crazy. That like, I, cause I don't live in LA right now. I live in, in Vegas. So I just happened to be there and yeah. And he texted me and I was like, he sent me two songs to listen to. He sent me La La Boom, which I really do like, but I think 69 was the better choice. And that's the one that I really, really liked. Um, so, so I picked 69, he gave me the address, I went over, like literally came in, my dog was with me, um, I just got Gus, so Gus was with me at the recording studio for two songs, I think he peed on the floor at uh, Todrick's people's house, <clears throat> anyway, 
I get in there in the booth and I I think we're there maybe an hour and he had already recorded his parts so like I came in and just knocked out everything I needed to do like pretty much you go in and, and you just say the same thing but differently like maybe four times four or five times and you do it with like different sounds and pitches and accents and all of that so that like when you're putting it together um it really sounds magical you know like so that was really cool we put all those parts together and i had not heard the song until it came out so yeah i'm really i love the whole album the whole album is everything and i think that 69 is the third most played song off the album, which I think is great because hasn't really been promoted too much, you know? I think he's put, putting out a museum, I believe, or I think that's the one, which I absolutely love. And he's going to be on Big Brother. <sighs> oh my God. Favorite Gaga track? Oh my God, it would have to be... Uh, I think I like nowhere, man, we're going nowhere fast. Uh, uh. What is that song? Um, dun, 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 oh, 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 man, is it summertime? Summertime? I really like that song. I know it sounds, seems like I would like know <laughs> this song. But like when I think about Lady Gaga, like I really got into Gaga when she first came out. So I really love that like poppy side to her. And I live for all the other stuff that she does. But like that was the one that I really connected to because she was just such an oddball in the music industry when she came out. But like I felt like I've always been like the oddball. Um, so I felt like I really connected with her on that. And then I think once, like, she really became more mainstream, I think she really just kind of dived into being, like, I don't know, like, super, like, taking whatever she was doing in the beginning and being weird and just kind of cranked it up, like, fucking 50 more notches. And I was, like, okay bitch yeah she was turning it and like everybody loved her and it was just something about like everybody loving her kind of made me feel like a little more distant because like i felt like when a lot of people didn't like really listen to her or whatever like i felt like i felt like the room was this small with her but now like you're like one in a bazillion that love her and i don't know I don't, I don't know. Is that weird? I don't know. Anyway, I love Lady Gaga. I think, I think Summertime is the best Lady Gaga song. It's just a really good film. I mean, you made me pick one, so I picked one. I, I picked that one. <laughs>